Welcome back. The goal is to get these red Genesis block tests to green. First up, you'd probably benefit from having your command line application and your code editor open at the same time. As you make changes to the project, Jess will rerun the tests and update whether or not those tests are still failing or now passing based on the changes. Cool. So I'll place this on the left, the test that is on the left, and then the code on the right. So I'll put this on the right, right next to the tests. All right, to get these tests to pass, we go to the block.js file. And then the first error is that block.genesis is not a function. Therefore, let's declare the genesis function, but we want this to be used in the static context. So we'll use the static keyword. And as this saves, notice that the test suite is updated. And this time we're getting a pair of failures for both of our tests relating to the Genesis block. Cool. So now that Genesis actually exists, you can get past that initial error. And now this time, well, we want to return a block instance. So let's return a new instance of the block class itself. And notice that in the static context, we can actually refer to the class name even though Genesis is contained within the block class. Nice. And now we have a more isolated but different error. This time it can't destructure the timestamp of undefined or null. Basically, it's saying that this block doesn't contain any data. The data that we want to return is that Genesis data though. So let's require that at the top of the file. This is gonna be a Genesis data import from the curly braces since the config file exports it within an object. So let's grab the Genesis data from the local config file. And now that we have this, we can use the Genesis data as the input to an entirely new block. And as we save this, all the tests are now passing. Very cool. Now one more improvement. Notice again that we're using the block class name within a static function in the block class itself. As sugar for this, JavaScript gives us the this keyword and this will refer to the block class. Notice that my code editor is matching this and block to be the same color, kind of convenient. And saving that indeed gets the test to pass as well. And awesome, we've now implemented the Genesis method. So real quick, this JavaScript pattern we just used with the static Genesis method to create a new block instance is called a factory method. Factory methods in programming refer to any functions that create instances of a class without directly using the constructor method. In this case, we have a static function that is creating a new block on the behalf of whoever calls Genesis. Before we move on, it'd be nice to check out the result of this Genesis block in a printed form. So back in the block.test.js file, let's add a console.log of the Genesis block right after we create it. So let's console.log Genesis block in a string so that we can identify it and then Genesis block itself as a second parameter to the console log. And what we have in the command line is the Genesis block. The timestamp is indeed our hardcoded one value. The last hash, the hash, and the data are all those hardcoded values in the config file. All right, great. Let's remove that console.log and then move on. So let's move on to the next part of the blockchain now that the Genesis functionality is complete.